Flow of fuel in your 3.0 Duramax diesel looks just like this. And today we have all of the major components of the fuel system right here at our fingertips that we're gonna go ahead and go over. We've got the low pressure side all the way to the high pressure side. And we're gonna break down exact details as to what these components are and what they do. We're gonna start off here with the fuel pump that's actually in the tank. Many people don't know, but there is a fuel pump inside the fuel tank. And like I said on this whiteboard in the beginning, we'll go into the full breakdown of this, of how it goes but actually maybe we should just do that right now so you have the tank to the fuel pump pumps the fuel out to the housing housing goes through a fuel pressure sensor that's where you get your reading that feeds the high pressure fuel pump and that feeds the rail which then feeds the injector and then the fuel is returned back into the tank so now that we know the overall layout of how that goes let's talk about the fuel pump that's in the tank now this is a three phase brushless fuel pump. It does operate at 60 to 70 PSI and it does have a strainer on it. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. You can see there's debris on this strainer itself down there. And I do have it separated from the bowl assembly here. You can see a bunch of crap inside there. There's a bunch of stuff that builds up. This plunger on the bottom, so that will go up and that allows fuel in, but it doesn't allow fuel out. So that's how the fuel stays inside of here. This is our float right here. So as you fill up the tank, this will go ahead and float up, shows a full tank like that, floats down, shows an empty tank. Pretty basic setup there. The real big thing is this pump. This is three phase brushless pump. Very, very good pump. When this starts to go out, there will be debris found inside the filter housing. This is probably how you recognize the filter housing. This is on the rail and this is where you will unscrew that and it will look like this. So once you unscrew, you'll pull off your fuel filter. However, you're not going to see DEF fluid contamination like this. Now, obviously there's a lot of DEF contamination on a lot of these components, and that's all for a different video, which what to do if you get DEF fluid in your diesel fuel. So I highly recommend you look for that video after watching this one, after you understand the fuel system, then the whole DEF situation is going to make more sense. But when you go to do a fuel filter, you unscrew it, and then this is your filter right here. So that comes from the filter housing. Now the housing has a couple components to it and this is bolted into the top of it. Right here on the bottom, that rests inside this bowl and that will give you a reading of water and fuel. Now, if you get DEF in there, it will also notice that and it's going to say water and fuel still, but DEF will definitely trigger that sensor. So we looking at this, this is actually the fuel heater assembly and there is also a temperature sensor built into that. The flow of the fuel, now it's bolted onto the rail like this, fuel flows into here, comes out through this point right here, swirls around inside here and gets heated up from the heater where it then goes down into there. So once it goes down into there, that's where it feeds into the outside of the fuel filter. The water will get separated and drained to the bottom and then the fuel that's been cleaned will come up through the middle here and that's going to come out through the middle here and inside there you can see that little itty bitty tiny hole and that's where the fuel is going to be exiting right there so once it leaves the fuel filter housing it actually goes into the fuel pressure sensor that's just built into a line now like i said you should be seeing 60 to 70 psi from the sensor if you're monitoring data that fuel is then routed into the inlet of the injection pump now this injection pump is a very very critical item it is timed i'm going to get into the whole timing feature of this it's actually uh, pretty amazing when you really realize what it's doing but Fuel is fed through here. We have fuel pressure regulator three and one on this injection pump. Number two is further down. We'll get into that in a little bit. Now, this is an HP5D, which is a Denso pump. And it looks identical to a CP4 pump, which if you're familiar with CP4, those are the ones that were blowing up in the LML trucks. We do not have that problem with this setup. All right, this is the return right here. So that's going to bleed off the excess return. Now let's go ahead and talk about the timing of the pump itself. This pump is gear driven from the chain and the back of the engine, and it must be timed because the pulses coming out of each of the sides of the pump are very, very critical. Those come into the fuel rail here. Now those will come into about the center of the fuel rail and feed 
at two different points on there. Now from the fuel rail, the fuel goes into the fuel injector. But before we get to the fuel injector, let's talk about fuel pressure regulator two sitting right here in the back. Now this will actually bleed off pressure out to the return side whenever it's trying to achieve whatever pressure it wants in the rail itself. This is our fuel rail pressure sensor at the other end. This is at the front of the engine. Going back into the pressures, now it's critical to have the timing correct on the pump. And the reason for that is because it's feeding alternating fuel pulses. So while it's getting the alternating fuel pulses, whenever an injector fires, the fuel is drained from that rail just a little bit. But when that's actually draining, we have one of these pulsing back into it so it keeps it perfectly even at all times. So that's the uh, modern engineering marvel right there that I think is super cool. If this pump is slightly off, I mean like just a tooth off, it will throw all sorts of fuel pressure related issues. So that's how critical this system is. Now going to the fuel injector, these are actually super cool injectors. These are solenoid style injectors and they can actually have up to 10 pulses per cycle, which is incredible. So if you think about that, how quickly uh, everything is firing within here. Now the holes are in here and we are not going to be able to see that, but that's the nozzle at the fuel injector. One thing that I wanna point out is on the fuel injector, the LM2 and LZ0 are different injectors, even though they may look identical, they are not the same. And the difference is, well, mostly the spray pattern at the tip here at the nozzle. Now that's gonna be different on the LZ0 because of the piston design. So that's one thing to make sure that you don't mix these up and accidentally buy an LZ01 for your LM2. The other thing is that there's a code on here and that needs to be programmed into the ECM anytime the fuel injector is replaced. So that is highly critical. That's going to determine how well these flow. And after that, you have to do a reset within the ECM, the small quantity adjustment, and then everything's good to go. So. Now that we've covered all the physical items of the fuel system, let's go ahead and break this down just a little bit deeper so that way there's a complete understanding of how this works. The electronics of it, the ECM feeds the fuel pump control module, which then feeds the fuel pump. The fuel tank obviously holds the diesel fuel. We have the filler neck, filler pipe. The green is the fuel, and so it goes into the pump, and it's a low pressure. Here's what we got going on, low pressure, high pressure, and return. So from the pump, it's feeding the housing, just like I said, goes through the housing and into the fuel pressure sensor. And then that's going to go into the pump where it will then become high pressure fuel. That's where it's fed into the fuel rail. And as I show here, the lines go into the injector. And now the return then comes back through here. And I should have put a little blue line on the fuel pump. My bad on that one. But there's also a return on the high pressure pump to send it all back to the tank. Now that goes straight to the tank, doesn't go into any of these other components. I also wanna point out the LM2 does have a fuel cooler in the return, the LZ0 does not. Now in regards to the def in the fuel, that is a critical item. So if you're curious as to what to do on the, if you put def in your fuel system, be sure to check out this other video as I break that down in full detail. 